I'll have a quick tidy out and then I'm going to get the glass in, but I'll quickly, quickly, everything's quickly, quickly, no, it's not slowly. Today I'm going to fit these bifolds here and I was going to do it on my own. So the other day I went to the place that I volunteer at because I left my genie lift there and I thought I could use it to help me lift the framing. But whilst I was there, I got chatting to someone and he was looking to do something on a Monday. And today's Monday. I'll let him introduce himself. Hello, I'm Hirin. I'm volunteer supervisor at Orchard Barn based in Suffolk. We're a community interest company specialising in real crafts and traditional building techniques. If you're interested in volunteering, we'll get Aidan to pop a link in the description below. We also do courses such as timber framing, which is one of our popular courses. It'll be great to see you there. First job, we're going to actually fix down the sill. Uh, the threshold is a little bit wider on this. I've done a different video about that. That's so we can set the actual frames back 30 mil into the actual cavity. I've leveled this off last night, so it's not wonky or anything you want to fix uh, no more than 400 mil centers in between your fixings because you want it supported all the way through i had to cut my damp course out of the way so i could level off that threshold we're just going to stick it down with silicon again and i also need to put another one to cover the back side as well Fixing the sill first, so I centralised that. We put a couple of little packers at the ends. That's a three mil and that's a three mil as well. We've got a bigger gap around the actual frame. Uh, this is levelled up now. We're actually going to do the foam and silicon at the bottom. So I've just got these packers. And then around the actual frame, I'm using expanding foam tape. I do overhang is 45 mil on your nose edge. Uh, that's from the face of the brickwork. So that leaves me with 100 mil of your block work, 30 mil going into your cavity. So I've got 175 mil seals. Where we fix in, we're using U-shaped packers or horseshoe, whatever you like. The fixing is effectively going to go straight through the middle, so it's going to be supported either side. Uh, these fixings they are concrete screws. They're seven and a half mil by 80 mil. I'm going to drill a seven and a half mil hole through here and then it'll be a six mil SDS uh, masonry bit through the actual concrete. Depending on your manufacturer, sometimes they go through the thermal break, which is there. On my particular ones, I'm going to go through this bit. Drilled in that side and then that side and then that's fixed so we can drill in the rest. I have had a little bit of a change of plan. I've went from these concrete screws over to these ones because you see that fluted bit at the end. It just makes it easier to get it flush because it needs to be flush here to make sure that it doesn't hit this. Procedure is center punch, drill, SDS drill, masonry, countersink, impact driver to screw in and then put a little bit of silicone around it. We're just doing the strap fixings around the edge. We're doing strap fixings on this one because if I direct fix, I'll end up in a cavity, which is no good on this particular frame. Depends where you can screw through your particular frame. Check the manufacturer instructions, go for strap if you possibly can. We're gonna go fixings 150 from the top, 150 from the bottom. Extra fixings in between, no more than 600 mil each way. Uh, this is a 2.1 length height door. So that leaves me with four fixings, four fixings the other side. I've got all the straps on, they're all the way around. And before I put the actual expanding foam tape on because we've only got a limited amount of time to mess about with that. We're just gonna do a dry fit to see if I'm clear all the way around. If you're doing silicon and expanding foam in a gun, you won't need to do this, but it's just a bit, it gets a bit tight. It's a little bit difficult. Do you know what you're doing? Are you catching on any of the things? Is that better? Yeah. Right, that's, that's fine. It's just going to be tight at the top. But I'm going to put the um, two mil expanding foam. 
at the top so we've got an extra mill to play with this lintel comes down on this side now that i know it fits i'm going to put the expanding foam tape around uh, this one is 3 to 18 i'm going to put that at the side so i haven't got enough to go at the top so i'm going to use the other one that i've got 2 to 12 but the top's a bit tight anyway this obviously you unroll it and then you stick it on once you take this backing off uh, you've only got a certain amount of time to do this so i should stop chatting and crack on i've done all my expanding foam tape and i'll show you that in a second but before we do that we just need to put the silicone around make sure you dam up the end here because that's where any liquid is going to go we want it to go down the channels and through there and then this back up stand you go all the way along if you do use the straps and you're going to put them on first these ones are quite stiff just bend them in slightly and then you can get it in easier and i've cut out there where the straps are otherwise it won't go in because it's a bit too tight ready <laughs> go on, you got the handle it's easier for you You get it to where that's it and we need to get the top in so mine's folded over a bit normally you wouldn't be able to let go of the actual unit itself you'd need to use air wedges but because we've got the expanding foam it's pretty much holding itself in what we're going to do is roughly get it in place in terms of plumbness and then we'll fix it and before you fix it take this tape off just in case it's trapped underneath and you need to move the frame like that and make sure you take the sticker off the back here obviously you're going to end up doing what i just done and siliconed it in but lucky enough we realise now, so we can take it out. And wipe off your silicone before it dries. I like to fix the bottom straps first. Once they're almost pretty, they're pretty much plump, we do this. Uh, I'm gonna drill the strap slightly wider, put in a concrete screw. These are aerated concrete blocks, Thermalites basically. Don't forget to pre-pilot it because if you just whack your concrete screw in, it will go in, but it won't hold that well. So the benefit of fixing the bottom first, then you've got a little bit of adjustment if it just goes out a little bit, which is what happened here. So I've re-plumbed it using my level I've put an air wedge in just to keep it in place whilst I've fixed this top one. As soon as your bottom and your top is fixed on both sides, your door's not going anywhere. You've got plenty of time to put these in without it moving. Didn't get very far yesterday, did we? Ooh. Yeah, so he, here and he's not done anything like this before. So I was showing him what to do and explaining it to him as well as explaining it to camera as well as chatting loads of rubbish in between and like giving him a tour of the place and stuff today even though it's already three o'clock uh, i need to fix the frame to the sill do the rest of the fixings around the outside and then i'm going to put the glass in and i'll show you how to pack it as well can you see the marks on the frame hopefully that will all come off not quite sure on the quality control of these fabricators i'm going to open these i'm pretty sure you have to do one at a time so this one gets fixed first and then you do this one i like how they've just left all the metal filings everywhere it doesn't take much to get it out look you can get one of these off amazon my new favorite tool link in the description 
just get rid of them. Like, why haven't all the fabricators got stuff like this, like little cordless? And another thing as well, you might think it's a good thing that they've done me a favour and they've already put the magnets on these and everything, but that didn't look right to me. Does it look right to you? I just had to work this out because I thought surely it shouldn't be like that. Surely they should touch better. And I thought if they just done these on the wonk and like screwed them in wrong. Anyway, uh, I'll show you down the bottom. It's a little bit easier. So just to explain, you see there's a little bit of a gap between here and here. Now that is the widest point there and closest point down at the bottom here. So if you unscrew it, You see there's that little hole there that basically needs to be facing this way yeah so if it's over here then the thickest part is over here and then that magnet will effectively face that way so it will connect with the other magnet on the other side correctly so yeah they've put them in but why fucking bother if you're not going to bother doing it properly bloody morons Anyway, yeah, this, you can use it as Hoover. So, link in the description. <laughs> Fixing the seal down, uh, or the frame to the seal. I'm going 150 in again, and then equal distance split between it. So it works out about 525, which is exactly the same as what I've got up the top. And for this, this section is directly above the drainage channel, so I won't need to silicon or anything. Uh, you could use these. These are like galvanized or zinc coated uh, self-drilling, self-tapping screws. They're the ones that they use on this kind of stuff. But I've got stainless steel ones. So I pre-drill it, pilot it with a three mil. And then these are about a four mil thread on it. And I might countersink it a little bit just to make sure that I clear that slider. I think it will anyway. <laughs> Tell you what, the amount of gaps in these gaskets, I'm not sure they're going to be very airtight. But I'm going to sort these out now. So they've only got one centre screw. So if you do them yourself, then make sure that you put them in the right place so your handle doesn't hit. They haven't paid particularly attention to that, so I might have to screw them out a little bit more than I would otherwise. If it was me, I would just would have moved them this way a little bit, like inwards. So, we're going to undo this, and then them two holes, they need to face each other, basically. Because they've put them probably a little bit too far out, I'm just going to have to unwind them slightly. Um, but it's a little bit loose. I'll probably get a little bit of Loctite and put it in there once I get the correct adjustment. See how the faces line up better now? <laughs> They're still misaligned off of each other, but there's not much I can do about that. Um, I've wound them out a little bit in the handle. This is what I was talking about. It's, it's a little bit close for comfort. So that's probably only like one mil off that. And then it comes out, it might catch the glass so I might have to adjust that that's why they should have put these this way a little bit more I'll have a little tidy up but before I put the glass in I'll show you how to pack it and brace it that's called towing and heaving so what you want to do is you want to brace it in corners to corners basically and the way that you work that out is you go to your hinge side okay and that means your first brace should start there next to your hinge and then you go up to this corner okay and then on this one you've got no hinges okay this one is your fixed post and you've got your hinges okay so the packers on the bottom side need to be on this side so that will brace up here and this one same again next to your hinge bottom there that will brace that way. I'll show you a quick animation of how the bracing occurs and then that will keep your doors solid. And I'll show you a perfect example of what happens if you don't brace it correctly. So this shed I built ages ago, the first thing that I built when I got here, and can you see 
uh, it sags down and there's a gap there. So that's twisted like that. Same principle, hinge side, bottom hinge. So my bracing should start here. Down the bottom, there's nothing there because the bracing is backwards, it's on the other side. So that allows that door to sag like that. So what I should have done is hinged it on this side instead of that side. And to help you get the packers in, I've got a little bit of a trick that I haven't seen anyone else do so far. So you need to stay tuned to actually see that. I'm sorry this is a little bit long, but it's just the way that I work. I like to show absolutely every single step to actually help people do these kind of things. It gets on my nerves so much when I watch a video and it tells you the title is how to do this and they miss out half the steps and you haven't got a bloody clue by the end of it still. I'm having one of them days where I can't actually be asked to do anything. <laughs> I'm gonna do the glass tomorrow. I have tidied up though. Uh, I remember that I, I had to do all the fixings around the outside, something I forgot to mention and a mistake that I made. Um, this is on the joint. Don't do that, it needs to be like up here. For this, it wouldn't hold, so I had to get a massive like raw plug and whack it in. And just to mention about plumbness, um, even though I took all that bloody time to try and get it bang on, uh, from top to bottom, it's off by three mil, which is okay, it's within tolerance. So NHBC standards, you can be five mil out of plumbness tolerance for the, the height of the door. Uh, windows, anything under one and a half meters tall, uh, it can be three mil out of plumb. For that big window over there, they're 1.8. You see, um, I've got that one mil out of tolerance, so I've done well over there. I'm not quite sure what happened over here, but it's just one of them things. And something that's a bit weird, that is perfectly plumb, like this way, yeah, and straight. This one, is bowed in the middle. I don't know why that is, because there's no force on it. The only thing I can think of is this locking mechanism. Maybe it's done something to just pull it in too tight. I have no idea, because there's no, no real tension on these. Don't understand it. And I've taken the stickers off. See you tomorrow. Okay, we're gonna start. <laughs> this, uh, you always start from your wall side where your hinges are. So these three fold all the way back there. So I'm gonna, this one, then that one, then that one. If I had say four panels like on the other bifolds and that one opened independently and then I had three this side, I'd still do the same, but you need to obviously brace differently on the end thing, on the end panel. Leaf on the end leaf. Uh, take the beads out first. Keep them in order so you know which one's which because they're probably cut accordingly. Now we're going to toe and heel, uh, partially at least, anyway. Um, so, for my particular manufacturer, you've got special shaped packers. Just check, obviously, with your manufacturer exactly what you need. Sometimes they like clipping. I use double-sided tape just to keep it in place. And you want to come about 30 mil off of the edge, off the corner, so you're going to leave a gap either side. So one goes there. Remember the hinge is down here. Not that way. Go round. My next one will go there. And then you would do exactly the same in the opposite corner. 
but for me I only put the side one in I don't put the top one in that way I know I can definitely get the glass in just to show you this is basically how you want to line it up which I didn't realize before but I've kind of only just discovered you see that measurement of the frame so that's like 16 mil and then over this side at the moment that's probably like 16 and a half once you get the glass in that's going to drop down and that's the reason why you need to pack it so once you've packed it you can check whether you've got whether you've packed it right because if it's sagging then you've done it wrong so on my french doors it's sagging a bit too much uh, so i've done it a little bit wrong i didn't measure it which was stupid but at least i know how to do it properly and you need to get obviously bifolds a bit more bang on and you probably need a glazing paddle that's what you normally use i use something else as well these are triple glazing packers only one company in the uk that do these if you actually need the triple glazing ones then ask me i can send you the company details you will need to buy a box of thousand though but i already know the manufacturers packers are not enough so that's why you need them as well as well as first security past 24 you need to put them in the opposite corners but one mil off the glass and at the sides as well. Now that's in loosely, you want to line it up with a frame basically. So the edge you see on your frame, like this bit here, that's what you're going to line up on the edges with the uh, warm edge spaces in your glass. So you can't see any of the outside gasket almost there, but down here you can see a bigger wedge. So that glass needs to be twisted that way. So I'm going to start, I'm going to put a packer in there and a packer on this edge and see how that lines up first of all. It's not enough, so I'm gonna do some more. I'll just carry on packing the edges until that's perfectly square, and then we'll look at how much we need to pack on the top and bottom. Looks like I've got the sides about right, and then comparing the top and the bottom, you need to start in this corner. Um, I need at least another one here. Hopefully I'll be able to do it with a paddle. It is quite heavy though. Then we've got the top corner left to do just here. Now that gap there is still about 16 and over here is 17. So this needs to be lifted up a little bit more. So at the moment I've got the uh, manufacturer's packer and then my single one mil packer that slides in but if I put another one on here that won't fit what people normally do is they force this up like that with the glazing paddle that just makes me feel a little bit uneasy just doing that but you can see that it moves I use one of my lifting bars this is a really basic one it hasn't got a foot at the bottom if you're gonna get one of these, you can get bigger ones. They're like plasterboard lifts, but these ones are a bit pants for lifting plasterboard, but they're good for this. You can squeeze this and then it will lift it up. So then that will give you more than enough room to actually get it in. Because that clears it a lot, it's easier just to do it. And then you can just release it and it will drop back down. You can use that on the windows as well, if you need to. I just popped another one mil packer using the same technique at the top there. And that reveal all the way across is perfect. So that's perfectly square. What I'm gonna do, depending on your manufacturer, you would normally just be putting in your, your beads and then your gasket now. For this particular manufacturer, I need to do thermal enhancement and I need to silicon round the bottom of the actual uh, glazing. 
but I'm not going to do that straight away because what I want to do is just work my way across, get all of the glass in and check that it operates and it's not sagged just in case, then I'll do my thermal enhancement. But I can't obviously leave this like this, so I'm going to put the beads in first. So you just put it in at a slight angle and then twist it in. And then to keep it in place, I'm just going to put some offcuts of gasket in. You just push it down that way to actually get it in. Right, I just need to work my way across now, remembering that I need to go toe and heel from there to there and then there to there. But because I've got that in and it's in place, we might as well double check that it's all right. That looks all right. Then this one will need there to there. And the reason why that is is because this is already sagging. So this won't actually close. So you see these bits here, they hit on this bottom bit here. But once I've braced it properly and forced this side up, see if I lift it, it closes. So that's the reason why you work from your fixed side all the way across. Otherwise, if you went that way, you just mess it all up. I mean, it's all toe and healed correctly and this, this frame has moved up slightly. So it opens up freely. There's, they're only temporarily in, but just in case I made a mistake and I needed to correct anything, I'm glad it's only temporary because there's a little bit of an issue, but I'll show you that in a second. I just want to show you that they open properly. Always make sure that you do this door first and then you open up the other ones. And it's weird how you can still hear me properly and I'm in here, <laughs> triple glazed. Nice. So on mine, I've got guides up there within the track. And then I've got stainless steel wheels down here. I'm not sure whether they've got actual bearings in. If they had roller bearings, it might be a bit smoother. I mean, it is smooth, but it's just a bit more resistance on the. And then see the problem. Can you see that over there? They've cut the gasket short, haven't they? <laughs> it's a bloody gap there. There's a bloody gap there that the water's going to go in, isn't it? So I need to take this glass out again now. <laughs> <laughs> then I can get an extra bit of gasket in. The old nick from these two here because they're going back and, well, I'm getting new ones basically. Before I sort that leaf out, I might as well just do these properly now. I've only got the gasket in temporarily, just a little tiny bit. So I'll, I'll take that off and then I'll show you what I need to do. No, you can't do it one-handed. You just need to roll these out. Okay, so we've got the toe and heel on them corners. Now for the additional security, i.e. pass 24 uh, dot Q, I need packers in the opposite corner. So down here and down there, so I'll put a few in there, a few in there, and then the same up top, that one, and then that one. There needs to be a one mil gap between the actual packers and the actual um, glass itself. You also need to put them in the center as well. So there and there. And to keep them in place, yeah, you can use probably maybe silicon and stuff, um, as long as it's but not reactive to butyl. I have got a silicon that will be used for that. It's not reactive to butyl because I need to seal down here. I'll show you what that is in a minute. And a little extra, I don't know whether it's only this manufacturer or whether a lot of them do it, but I've got this uh, foam backer rod. So this is for thermal enhancement. To get it in, just get a normal glazing packer and just push it in like that. I've done the foam backing rod, that's just in there. That's all the way around, apart from where the packers are. It's gone around the corners as well, packers there, up there. And then that's where you can put in your other packers. And then you just carry on. So there's a bit of a thermal gap there. 
So I just push the thermal stuff back a little bit more and then just put another one over the top. And then round the bottom, because of um, any potential water that could come this way, we need to seal it. And for that, we need to use neutral cure silicon. This is pseudo rub 2. We need to seal it all the way down the bottom and then we're gonna gum 150 mil up each side. That will stop any potential water coming through. This doesn't react with the butyl that is around the actual glass. So this is safe to use if you're gonna go down this route. It depends on your manufacturer. Always sit, ask if you can uh, see the instructions, basically the fitting instructions. Um, I rang up the technical line for senior architectural systems just to check whether I needed to do this because I did read the manuals beforehand, but then they removed them off their website. And when I spoke to him, he, he didn't even think I needed to do this. And I, I said, oh, I'm sure that I've read that. And then he pulled up the files and see that I actually did need to do it. So always double check. Don't just assume there's a reason why the manufacturers said that you have to do this kind of stuff. I'll show you how my beads work. I would imagine they're pretty similar throughout the manufacturers. This bit on the edge here, that goes in first. So there's a little recess under here, like a lip. And then it forces down onto the edge and then that little bit clips in. So if I get it in. So you put it in at a slight angle. Okay, so it's twisted like that. And then you go in down and then that's sorted. Oh and it's likely to be your top and your bottom beads first before the side ones because of the height. On small windows it might be the other way around. They need to go in order otherwise you won't be able to get them in. That's pretty much the whole process. I just need to fit the gaskets now. Make sure you do the bottom ones then the two sides then the top. If you need to know exactly how to do that, then that's in my window fitting video, which I'll drop here. And if you haven't used expanding foam tape around the outside and you need to know how to silicon and foam around your windows, I'll drop that video here. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Good luck fitting your bifolds.